behalf of um, the defense. Your Honor, Ms. Green and I have had the opportunity to review the pre-sentence inve investigation report. We find it to be factually correct. We have no additions or deletions at this time. With respect to sentencing, is there anything on behalf of the people? Judge, so I'm looking at the recommendations from probation. I see they recommended uh, a probationary term for 12 months. They also recommended six weeks of anger management. I'm gonna actually ask the court to amend that to at least 12 weeks, just due to the nature of the charges, Judge, and the description of the def uh, offense listed on page four. Um, the other recommendations, Judge, I'm just reviewing. I see there's a driver improvement program that was included in the recommendation, which is fine by the people uh, in five days of community service. Um, I'm gonna ask the court again to amend that to at least one week of community service in this case, Judge. Other than that, Judge, uh, the complaint witness is present in person. I understand that probation did contact Mr. Reeves and he did give a victim impact statement um, on page four. So I'm gonna ask the court to just review that victim impact statement, Judge, and Mr. Um, I don't have a victim impact statement. Oh, you mean that that's on the victim the statement. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Judge, the victim statement. Let me correct myself. There's a victim statement. If there is anything additional Mr. Reeves would like to add to that, Judge, I would defer to Mr. Reeves. Also, Judge, regarding restitution, it says to be determined. Um, I'm assuming that was based off the conversation that the uh, probation officer had with Mr. Reeves in the victim statement. So I would just defer to Mr. Reeves if there's any uh, proof of any restitution payments that need to be made at this time, Judge, because I, ne I never spoke with Mr. Reeves after the plea was taken. So I don't have any receipts or anything for restitution. So I would just defer to Mr. Reeves for that. But other than that, Judge, there's nothing further from the people. Mr. Reeves, would you like to give a victim impact statement? I would. You may. Thank you, Ms. Bryant, Judge Bryant, if you would allow me to uh, not only submit the paperwork, some other paper, but I have a number of uh, extra bills that are still recurring, as well as treatments that still need to take place because of the nature of this incident. Um, and I, I thought we would be here in person, so I have this uh, all tangible, as well as the actual photos, as well as videos of the procedures that I had, the surgeries, at least seven surgeries that I had to take or have because of Ms. Green's action. Judge Bryant, if you would just give me a moment to explain what happened. Ms. Green was asked repeatedly to drop her eighth grade son off to the middle school door at John R. King. After four or five times of Ms. Green, pulling her car all the way up to me while I'm taking children out of their cars and walking them up to the sidewalk. Ms. Green purposely drove around all the parents in line with them to drop their kids off. And she repeatedly pulled up on them with her car. After the first few times, she was verbally warned. She was asked the first time to please stop and I even gave her directions on where to drop her eighth grade son off. But she repeated, kept bringing driving around the parents that were in line and purposely pulling up on me in the parking lot with her car to the point where this last time she was unable to stop in time and I ended up having to push off of that, off of Miss Green's car. If I did not do it at that time, I would have been on top of the car or up under her car. At this point, Ms. Green was asked to stop. She continued to 
go on and just do reckless actions with this car. I reported it to my principal. I even reported it to DPSCD. Ms. Green was asked not to even come to the school. We even had to go through the process of getting Ms. Green banned from the school because she kept doing reckless actions towards me. I don't know no other way to try to ask for reconciliation because the time that I'm still suffering, I'm on a scooter right now, Judge. I'm still going through, getting ready to go through physical therapy. I just had my last surgery where my ankle was fused because of Ms. Green's action. I heard you all say one week of uh, probation or something else, but Judge, I honestly believe that there needs to be more accountability to Ms. Green's actions. I am, this happened back in 2019. It's June 2023. I'm still suffering from Ms. Green's actions. I am asking and I'm willing to submit these papers with uh, some of the weeks that were lost in um, my work where I had to take off because of surgeries and I was denied workman's comp with DPS. I'm still paying everything out of pocket. I've lost my other job and streams of income, not only speaking, but traveling and making sure that I can get to my other responsibilities with doing youth consulting all around the country. Ms. Green's actions have changed my life completely. I don't know any other way to express myself. And please just forgive me if I'm sound emotional, because I am. This is my first time even coming close to even having an opportunity to address this situation in a professional manner. I'm still suffering from this injury that Ms. Green caused. I'm asking, Your Honor, that it's just not probation and anger management, but just as I had to sit still and recover for years now, I'm asking that Ms. Green suffered, jailed, not suffered, but has had to render jail time because just like I had to sit still, maybe she needs to sit still and be behind bars, along with paying me back all the money that I had lost, as well as the money that I'm still coming out of pocket on. I can understand if this was an accident, but this was not an accident, Judge Bryant. We were, Ms. Green was asked to stop with the reckless foolishness that she continued to display at John R. King. That's my place of work. This is how I make my living. And for her to come and just continually, not only disrespect the school, not only disrespect the kids, but put myself and the kids in danger. Yeah, yeah, I don't know any other way to express this, but there has to be some kind of accountability because the actions that Ms. Green took, I don't know what else to say, but the best way to stand up to a bully in a situation is to say enough is enough. So, you know, Judge Bryant, I don't know what else you would need from me. I have paperwork, I have uh, pictures as well as videos. But please, I'm asking you, do not let this situation just be a slap on the wrist. I am still suffering. I am, this is gonna be a life, this has been a life changing situation where I am affected for the rest of my life. My ankle is now fused. It took me, I started at 3 a.m. Just for example, I started at 3 a.m. this morning because of the rain. Judge Bryant. What I'm asking you is, Ms. Green can never pay me the amount of money that I've lost. She can never replace the amount of time that I've lost, the engagements that I've lost, the time with my family, friends, as well as the schools, as well as their different positions that I now have to try to readjust my new way of life now. I'm asking, can you please speak up for me in a tangible way where Ms. Green will know that this is not okay. 
at all. I need your help. I need justice. That's what I'm asking for. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Stevenson, anything on behalf of the defendant? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, because of the nature of the plea, Ms. Green was um, advised uh, not to make a defendant's statement, Your Honor, and that was her right not to do that. We did offer a no contest plea, um, anticipating that um, Mr. Reeves might try to avail himself of um, civil proceedings in order to be made whole. And which which we would argue would um, you know is is arguably appropriate here. Um, Ms. Green, according to the pre-sentence investigation report, has absolutely no prior criminal history, Your Honor, um, and you just don't want to get into everything um, that's involved here because this matter may proceed to civil litigation, Your Honor. Um, but we're here charged with a misdemeanor, convicted at this point of two misdemeanors, um, Ms. Green with no prior criminal history, employed at this time, having no contact with the complaining witness, having no contact with the location of the incident, ready to accept the responsibility for her actions. Um, we trust this court to fashion a sentence which does give Mr. Reeves justice there is another form whereby he may he may be made whole, even though Ms. Green does understand um, that because of the no contest plea, she is expecting some type of restitution, Your Honor. Um, but there is a forum whereby Mr. Reeves may be made whole. And Ms. Green has no prior criminal history. Um, in addition to deterrence and you know, rehabilitation, definitely, I believe, is one of the goals of this court. And I don't see any reason why the sentence recommended by the probation department would not um, give the court, should Ms. Green comply with those conditions, assurances that she won't be back here with these types of charges in the future. So I'm asking the court, um, if, not, if it's not inclined to follow the probation department's recommendation um, to follow Ms. Ritter's recommendation, Your Honor. Um, I did just want to point out, I know that in her conversation with the probation department, um, Mr. Farmer was left with the impression that Ms. Green was um, somewhat evasive. And again, I would ask the court to um, hear my reason for that, which again is the advice of counsel, because this was a no contest plea, that she should give, definitely not try to hold back any information that the probation department would need to make a sentencing recommendation, but just not to get into the facts of the case, because it was a no contest plea. Ms. Green has been completely cooperative with me throughout this entire process, ready to bring this matter to its lawful conclusion, hasn't violated any of the court's conditions, Your Honor, with regard to having no contact with the complainant. And I'm asking the court to follow the people's sentencing recommendation. Would Ms. Green like to make a statement on her own behalf? Ms. Green. No, All right. Well, Ms. Stevenson, as you can see, Mr. Mr. Green is sitting on the screen. Mr. Green, can you unmute and just put your name on the record and tell me if you're related in any way to Nicole Green? Yes, Your Honor. No, I am not related at all. All right. And your name for the record? Yes, Demetrius Green, Specialty Court Case Manager. All right. So um, when I read the pre-sentence report, and um, and then when I, as I sat here to listen to um, the complainant who I apologize, um, whose name has escaped me, but I was thinking to myself, maybe this was an epic fail on behalf of the warrant unit in the prosecutor's office. Now, I don't know what process they go through when they issue the warrant, particular warrant. I was looking to see if this had started out um, as um, a felony, right? I was looking to see if it had to start out a felony and it didn't. And then um, I'm, I'm reading and then I'm listening to Mr. Uh, I'm going to tell you his name in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. 
I um I saw it on here. Um, I'm listening to uh, Mr. Reeves, and I'm saying, well, why did the why did the prosecutor's um office charge this as something having to do with a, a, a accident as opposed to a felonious assault with a vehicle. That's what I was thinking. I was like, you know, this should be, I don't know why you shake your head. Yes, Ms. Green, because that don't that's against you. Felonious assault, I think that's like a 10-year felony or something. I don't know. And then this one of them, okay, so I'm saying that for a couple of reasons. So I don't know what the process is that the warrant office of the prosecutors, the warrant division of the prosecutor's office goes through. I feel like if they had interviewed Mr. Reeves, that maybe they would have charged differently. That, that's how I feel. That if they had interviewed Mr. Reeves, that perhaps they would have charged differently. Because I'm sitting here saying, it started out as spelling to stop at a personal injury accident, which also says to me that she hit him and ran, a hit and run. So she hit him and she didn't stop. And then, you know, y'all do what you do and negotiate it down to failing to report accident. Now, I'm gonna say that I'm a little disheartened by the the way it began in terms of charging and the way it ended in terms of charge um and if what mr reeves said is true this was sorely severely undercharged by the prosecution and um and, and that's that's disheartening and then let me tell you what i observe let me tell you what i have observed today and the last time we were here i observe and i feel like miss green could care less that she could give let i need you to stop being so animated sir I observed that Miss Green could care less that she is 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 aloof. She is not contrite. Is she is whatever she is. And I am feeling like I all am not going to accept this rec this recommendation and give her an opportunity to go back up to the to the to the original charge um, if she chooses to. But I'm also the reason I asked Mr. Green to come on is because I'm thinking to myself. A person has to be almost mentally ill for me to hear what I heard today. You know, I always say this right here. It, and, and I've even, I think, told you all this story. I don't know if I've ever said it on the record, but I know I've told it to the attorneys, like off the record when we're having our little, you know, post court chat of how I almost hit somebody and how it devastated me, how I was crying at the thought of almost hitting somebody. Yet Miss Green appears on my screen and she did hit somebody. And if that baby shake her head, no, uh, one more time. Did she shake that head? No, to the left or to the right? No, one more time.
And that's exactly what I'm talking about. That right there is exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly what I'm talking about. And so I want to believe that the reason she is acting in this way is because she has some type of mental illness or mental disorder that she needs to have addressed by the specialty court, which is why I brought the specialty court coordinator on here. There, according to her self-report, she doesn't have a history of mental illness. But everything that I see says that she either is mentally ill or she needs to be in prison. Let me tell you that. So what, from what I see, I say she's either mentally ill, has some type of mental disease or disorder, or she needs to be in prison and the prosecutor should have charged her with at least at a minimum felonious assault. Perhaps they should have charged her with assault with intent to do great bodily harm less than murder. Or perhaps they should have charged her with assault with the intent to murder. So while she coming on here with this little lackadaisical attitude, I had to admonish her this morning about her, how she's standing, how she's putting her ear up to the, the phone and whatnot it's ridiculous it's appalling and it's offensive and i agree with mr reeves i agree with mr reeves i agree with mr reeves but where i disagree with mr reeves is that this is simply a misdemeanor. It's a misdemeanor. And it's only punishable by up to 93 days in the Wayne County Jail. Now she's on the verge of getting 90 of the days. But I'm going to give Miss Green an opportunity to talk to Mr. Green, who says they are not related. So, and I. I don't have any reason to believe they are. I just always ask when it's the same last name. And she can hear what he has to say. At a minimum, she's going to have to submit to a mental health evaluation before I will agree to her sentencing. You see what I'm saying? She done raised them eyebrows already at the thought of a mental health evaluation. the one that hit him and so your attitude sucks who has now had to endure surgery after surgery after surgery if i was the cause of that if i caused that to somebody whether i intended it or not I would be contrite. I would be so sad and sorry. I would be like, I am so sorry. If I didn't say anything else, notwithstanding a no contest plea, notwithstanding that Mr. Reeves may sue me civilly, I would say, I'm so sorry that happened to you. I'm so sorry that you have had to endure these surgeries. You're offensive, Miss Green. Your demeanor with respect to this situation, it's offensive. I'm going to let her talk to Mr. Green. It is my intention, as I indicated, at a minimum, she's going to have to submit to a mental health evaluation. Because if she passes that mental health evaluation and they tell me, no, she just whatever, whatever and she doesn't need mental health treatment because there's nothing in her report that says she needs mental health treatment 
in terms of her self-reporting, but nobody gave her a mental health evaluation. If she is not a candidate for mental health treatment court, I'm going to tell you right now, she's going to jail. She's going to jail. And I'm going to write a letter. I'm going to find out from the state court administrator's office if it is inappropriate for me to express my displeasure to the prosecutor about how they charge this case. It's appalling to me. It's appalling. Based upon the police description of the incident, it's appalling. I'm gonna send Mr. Green and Ms. Green to break our room. Judge Bryant, if I may interject. Um, so, Miss, uh, if Miss Green is self-reporting that she does not have any mental issues, um, she don't that, qualify. Yeah, that would be a non-qualification. Yep. We can't check it out. So, per, um, I do not have the ability to make a clinical assessment. Um, that would be required by a licensed practical, uh, licensed practice uh, assessor. We do have a clinical assessor on our team. However, she is not in the office today and she is working from home. So I'm not sure about her availability in this moment. But um, if we All would right. like to schedule something with her, we can make that happen. OK, yeah, let's do that. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to adjourn the sentencing. I want Ms. Green to submit to a mental health assessment. And then I'm gonna set the sentencing for in-person. And that in-person sentencing is going to be Mr. Green. How long? Like, what do you know anything about her the availability? Um, so I do know in this next week we will be traveling to a conference and right. we will be going yeah. all week. But right. however, the week following that, uh, we should be available that Monday, um, specifically because I know Tuesday is going to be a holiday, July fourth. But yeah, we can probably get her done that Monday. Okay, so let's see if we can schedule her for that Monday. And then I'm going to adjourn the sentencing um, to the following. Well, I want to make sure it's a day that I'm definitely going to be in person. Miss Stevenson, do you know anything about the Hickman trial on the July the 10th? There is a 12 noon check in. Well, I don't know the charge. That's what you want to know what the charge is, Judge? It's a bench trial. Mm -hmm. Okay, as to whether it would go or not. Yeah, July 10th, that's Hickman. That's my. That's the bench trial. Oh, Mr. Flanagan, can you help me, please? Well, you know what? Strike it. Okay. Because Wilma Baker, I have a jury trial, Wilma Baker. It's not yours. It's on. It starts on July 11th. I don't even know that attorney. Um, I'm going to set the sentencing for July 11. I'm going to adjourn the sentencing. Excuse me, Yes, sir. I was trying to see if I can, um, is it possible to do the following week? I wanted to know if I can be at the sentencing. I have a summer camp. It's a prior engagement that I run in Lake City, Michigan. It would be a huge ordeal if I okay. had to try to get back down to Lake City. So that's that, that's that week I was just talking about? Yes, ma'am. I, I do. It starts the 8th through the 15th, and I'm done the 15th. Okay, thank you. All right, well, then I'm going to set the sentencing for uh, July the 17th. No, 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 no. I'll do it on the second day of the trial, July the 18th.
that's at 902 and it is in person. So the, the assessment should be complete before then and, and then we can address uh, moving forward. Additionally, um, I'm going to indicate that should Ms. Uh, Green fail to appear on July 18th for the sentencing, she looked like she just froze up because she was walking and moving because that wasn't her same background just a minute ago. When I first looked down, that's not, this not the background I had. So she walking and moving and now she doesn't have signal. I can, um, I think the phone may have died, but I can get her on the phone so she can hear if that pleases the court. Died, but go ahead. Okay. Because I want her to hear that if she failed to appear, her bond is going to be $30,000, 10% plus a GPS restricted tether. She'll be here, Judge. All right. Well, I. I, I want to make sure she know that, but I, I, it's just it's just ringing, Judge. I trust you. She probably something. She should she moved. Oh, this is her calling now. Just a second. Okay, Your Honor, I do have Ms. Green on speaker. All right. Can she hear me? Ms. Green, can you just say whether or not you're able to hear the judge? Yes, I am. Oh, now she's there. She is back. Okay. Zoom. All right. So I indicate the sentencing is July 18th at 902. That's in person. And then if Ms. Green fails to appear, her bond is going to be $30,000, 10% plus a GPS restricted tether. Anything further? Judge, um, one thing from the people. So by that date, does the court want the um, restitution information from Mr. Reed? Yes. So um, he says he has a packet there today. Do you want him to leave the packet there so that you could get it when you come to court next week? If that's possible, Judge, I would appreciate that. Just so And then the prosecutor, she's going to pick it up uh, from you. So, um, Her, oh, Mr. I can I get that to Mr. Green. Okay. Well, it's too fine. late. I already clicked closed thing out. I didn't see Mr. Uh, I didn't know Mr. Bird was still in there. And actually...